I would like to welcome all for the paper presentation for stabilizer design for deep soil mixing using fly ash to stabilize expansive soil. I am Ms. J. Sankita. Other authors of this paper are Ms. J. Dalshika and Dr. M. C. M. Nasvi. These are the contents of today's presentation, introduction, expansive soil categorization, methodology, results and discussion and conclusion. Our research is based on the stabilization of expansive soil. Expansive soil means which experience undesirable swelling and shrinkage behavior under changing moisture content. Expansive clay minerals such as monmoronite and some particular types of elites can be responsible for this expansiveness of the soil. Because of this undesirable swell and shrink behavior, lightly loaded structures can be severely distressed. To overcome these problems, we can go for the ground improvement methods which, which improves the strength and bearing capacity of the soil. Ground improvement method can be classified into two, mechanical method and chem chemical method. Compaction, replacement and preloading are some of the examples of mechanical method. In chemical method, chemical is mixed with soil to improve the soil properties. It can be classified into two, surface mixing and deep soil mixing. Uh, in our project, we use deep soil mixing. Deep soil mixing is applicable for the depth greater than 1.5 meter. According to the method of mixing, deep soil mixing can be classified into two, dry method and wet method. In dry method, soil is mixed with a dry binder and it is applicable for the high moisture content soil. In wet method, soil is mixed with a slurry including binder and it is applicable for the soil having low moisture content. In our project, we used wet method because of the low moisture content of the soil. Design of DSM column includes two major uh, designs. One is stabilizer design and geometric design. The objective of the stabilizer design is develop the heave versus area ratio design charts to determine the required treated area ratio for limit the heave within the range. Selection of binder type, optimum water binder ratio, and optimum binder content are the major concern in stabilizer design. Selection of length of the, length of the column, diameter of the column, and spacing between the column are the major steps in geometric design. Development of spacing versus area ratio design chart is the objective of the geometric design. According to the literature review, we conclude that there are very few studies focusing on the DSM treatment to establish expansive soil. And those studies have used Portland cement-based stabilizer system in the DSM treatment. To date, there are no studies focusing on the DSM treatment of expansive soil using fly ash. Therefore, aim of this research was to develop the stabilizer design guideline to establish expansive soil using fly ash as the stabilizer. For the research, expansive soil was collected from Digane area. Sample location is shown in figure five. Index property test, free swell test, and constant volume soil pressure test were conducted on raw samples. According to the Unified Soil Classification System, the soil was classified as low plasticity clay, and as per the free swell ratio, it was classified as moderate swelling potential soil. Our research is based on the stabilizer design of the DSM column. These are the major steps of the methodology. First, selection of uh, binder. Fly ash having the potential to provide multivalent cations, which produce fluctuation in clay, clay particles and limit the ex expansivity of the soil. And fly ash involved in the uh, pozzolanic reaction with the presence of water, it's improved the mechanical properties of the soil. Therefore, fly ash was selected as binder in this research and collected from Lakvijia coal power plant. According to the chemical composition of the fly ash, it was classified as ASTM class F fly ash. Next step is selection of optimum water binder ratio. Water is very essential in binder soil mixing. It supports the hydration process of the binder and helps to achieve the efficient mixing. It's very important to maintain optimum water content in the mix. If the water content is too high, then the mix will have high void ratio. It will lead to the electrostatic attraction loss between the clay particles by reducing the numbers of, numbers of clay to clay content. Because of this, the strength of the treated uh, soil can be reduced. Similarly, if the water content is too low, it affects the strength of treated soil by percent of the air void. Air voids can reduce the ability of dispersing the binder ions. And low water content can result in unbounded clay to clay surfaces due to the insufficient mixing. Therefore, it is essential to maintain the optimum water binder ratio to have high strength and efficient mixing. 
In this research, water binder ratio was selected as 0.6. Next, selection of optimum binder content for that four different binder contents were selected, including 10, 15, 20, and 25 percentage. And mixed design was conducted on those binder contents. And according with the unconfined compressive strength, strength test and constant volume soil pressure test, optimum binder content was selected. Table 3 shows the misdesign used for stabilizer design. With the use of this, dry, dry weight of soil per sample, weight of binder per sample, um, and total water content of this mix were calculated. Next step is development of heat versus area ratio design chart. This, char this chart was developed for optimum binder content with different column lengths, including 2, 4, and 6 meters. These equations were used to calculate the heave of the composite section. Here, SW is indicates the swell percentage of composite section, and SW column is swell percentage for treated uh, column, and SW soil is swell percentage for the untreated soil. In this research, uh, area ratio was considered as 0 to 60 percentage. Now we move to the result and discussion. First, effect of fly ash on UCS result. UCS value of treated sample increased 58 percentage with the binder content up to 15 percentage and then reduced 42 percentage with any other further addition of binder. Initially, tri unit weight of the sample increased with increased binder content due to the increase in the total weight of the solid in the sample. And fly ash having the potential to develop porcelanic reaction, which caused for the simultaneous process. And porcelanic products bind the clay particles together and forming a strong bonded matrix. This increased the UCS up to 15% of binder content. Then beyond 15% of fly ash, total water in the soil sample increase with the binder content. If the water content is too high, it makes the clay particles to triple each other and losing their electrostatic attraction. The excess amount of binder intru introduced in the soil can cause for the formation of weak, weak bonds. Because of these reasons, UCS value of the treated sample decreased beyond the 15% of binder content. According to the UCS result, optimum binder content was 15%. Then effect of fly ash on swell pressure. Swell pressure decreased with the uh, binder content and percentage reduction is about 53%. The reason of the reduction is the fly ash having potential to provide multivalent cations which promotes fracturation of the clay particles by cation exchange. Therefore, surface area and water affinity of the sample decrease and it's caused for the reduction in swell pressure. The maximum decrease in swell pressure is obtained at 25% of fly ash content. By considering both UCS and swell pressure result, optimum binder content for developed heave versus area ratio design chart was selected as 15%. Heave reduction percentage in each column is shown here. Here you can obtain that the heave is further reduced with the increase of area ratio because the area covered by the binder increase with the area ratio as this, he as this helps to uh, provide more multivalent cations and reduce surface area and water affinity of the sample. It leads to heave reduction with the area ratio. The aim of the development of this chart is to calculate the required treated area ratio to limit the heave within the allowable range for certain soil pressure and active depth. For example, to build a rigid pavement on top of the soil having 104 kilopascal of uh, swell pressure, which we used in this research, and active depth zone of 2 meter, the required treated area ratio is around 34 percentage. Likewise, uh, with use of these type of charts, the required treated area ratio for limited the heave uh, can be calculated. As the result of this research, we conclude that optimum binder content for UCS is 15% and soil pressure of the stabilized sample reduced with the increase in binder content up to 25%. But when we consider the both strength and swell, the 15% is the optimum uh, binder content for the DSM design. And developed he versus area ratio design chart can be used to determine the required treated area ratio to limit the heave within the range. And the DSM technique can be successfully applied to treat the expansive soil using fly ash as the stabilizer. These are the references we used. And I would like to thank you all for the attention. Thank you.